<laughs> I bought a bulldozer. <laughs> Hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's back up a few days because there was one more thing I had to get before this point. And this required a road trip. That's right, in order to bring home my bulldozer, I needed a trailer. And here's what I got. Oh, that's the light for We bought a trailer. And not just a regular trailer, we bought one that's big enough that can handle the weight. Four tires on each side, total of eight tires. This thing can handle 25,000 pounds. Big heavy duty gates on the back. Electric brakes. I was going to just have somebody move it for me, but then I was thinking, you know what? I also need to buy a tractor. So yeah, that's what the road trip was all about. Now we're heading back home. Tomorrow we're going to get the dozer and bring it home. But before we do that, we're going to go to that store over there and we're going to get some ratcheting binders and some chains for our chaining down the dozer on the trailer. October 25th, 2023, we are picking up our dozer, finally. good. I think it's good. This side needs to come down. Yeah. Good, solid. Nice job. You got all this, don't you miss nothing. <laughs> Oh, 
this right here? Look how nice this is. Step right on up like that. That is nice. I like that. stuff back here and I'm like the first time the dozer goes up she's gonna bend it <laughs> so I want something that no, it can handle <laughs> That transmission got kind of warm. Coming up this hill, so we pulled over. Then a couple miles up the road, this happened, along with the transmission overheating. It wasn't so much the weight of the dozer on the trailer, it was the fact that we were going up and down really steep hills. Where do I begin? So yesterday we picked up the dozer, so now the next day, and uh, I thought I planned out pretty well everything, you know, the truck can handle pulling the trailer, I got a nice heavy duty trailer, I can handle the weight. What I did not calculate into my plans was the area between the major city, which we go back and forth to, I say major, it's a, it's a decent sized uh, city and where the cellar lives. Between that, it's about eight miles, and there are some really, really steep mountains. Um, and I didn't even think about that. So when we started pulling that heavy load, the uh, I started getting a transmission overheat light. And uh, so we pulled over. I read the manual, said, you know, Leave it in neutral and let it idle. And that's what I did. Initially, I put it in park, but I moved it in idle. It eventually went out. And uh, one thing I will say is the people here in West Virginia are really great. Uh, there was a state trooper went past us, and then he turned around, came back, and checked on us. I told him what was going on, and and uh, he he uh, understood. I said we don't need any help. We just you know transmissions overheating. So uh, I did ask him how much further to, to the top of the hill. And he says, just right around the corner here. So once it cooled off, we started up again. And uh, my my Dodge uh, Ram truck, it's a dually one ton. It has a Jake brake on it. And uh, the transmission also helps to slow you down going downhill. So once we crested the hill and went down, it was a long, steep downhill. I'm squeezing the trailer brakes. There's a manual override where you can squeeze the trailer brakes. And I was using them a lot using the brakes on the truck a lot and by the time we get to the bottom of the hill I started smelling smoke uh, or a very bad smell and then when we came to a stop smoke was just billowing out from underneath the truck and I was like oh no I blew the transmission uh, thought the transmission fluid was you know smoking on dripping on the exhaust or something and smoking and the thought of fire popped in my head now fortunately I do carry a fire extinguisher, sure, and, and unfortunately, it's buried amongst a bunch of stuff in the back uh, seat. So, uh, pulled over, stopped, 
uh, left it idling, got out and looked, and I realized that the smoke was not coming from the transmission. Oh, the transmission overheat light had come on too because it was helping to slow us down the hill. And uh, when I noted, looked at the smoke, I realized it's coming from the brakes. Yep, you already guessed it. So the brakes were overheating and smoking. So I went ahead and uh, just turned it off because I knew we were going to be there a while with brakes overheating and uh, put out some triangles and gave it, you know, a good 30 minutes or so. The smoke went away pretty quick within, you know, a couple minutes. And I got a water bottle and climbed underneath the truck and was throwing it on the calipers, not on the rotors because that can warp them and cause them to be messed up or crack. So just on the little housing of the, of the rotors, I mean the um, calipers. So um, after about a half an hour of that, brakes were cooled down enough and we were getting ready to hit a flat area. So I knew they'd cool down more. And we got the, uh, um, the rest of the way, which is another, I don't know, 45 minutes, 35 miles, something like that. It's a kind of twisty, windy, uh, little ups and downs, nothing major. Never got another light, uh, transmission overheat light. The brakes didn't get too hot. Uh, got here to our right of way to come up to our property and I went to unload. By the way, I had to back about half a mile down our road because it's very skinny, single lane. And um, as I was taking a bulldozer off, me not really knowing how to operate a bulldozer, just been shown the basics, um, it started going down the ramps pretty fast. And so I jumped on the brakes and I hit them too hard. When I did, the thing came to a jerking halt and all that weight right on the very edge, back edge of the uh, trailer caused the front of the trailer to lift up, which was attached to the truck, which had the, you know, which was in park. And so the back wheels being lifted up, which is the only thing keeping it from rolling and we're parked on a downhill grade. Uh, yeah. So the back end of the truck's up in the air and the whole thing with me on the dozer on the trailer started rolling downhill and I'm screaming at my wife, get in the truck and hit the brakes. Wouldn't have done any good. I'm glad she didn't do it. Could have injured her. Um, the problem was when <laughs> I, we're rolling, I'm rolling backwards. I don't even know what's behind me. And then I start feeling the trailer leaning because it's going off of about a two foot mound onto the, to the driveway. And then thank God, because at this moment I'm thinking this thing's gonna stop on, at a steep enough angle to where those metal tracks will slide right off that wooden trailer. And this whole thing's gonna go over and land on its side with me in it. It was, it was a frightening ordeal. Uh, Chanel was filming at the time, but She's new to this, uh, this camera, and so she had it in, in picture mode, so it only took like one picture as I'm starting. She thought it started the video, but anyways, um, didn't get any video of that, of me, you know, the whole event that unfolded, and um, I, was, I was just thankful that when it finally came to a stop, I got the thing started real quick and went down. I wasn't sure how well it was going to stay where it was at and once I got that dozer off of the the trailer uh, I just continued until I got clear of the road up onto the right-of-way and then lowered the blades set the brakes turned it off I looked over my shoulder and what I saw uh, almost made me cry the trailer was jack uh, the, the the truck was jackknife with a trailer and the trailer was jammed right into the side of the truck. My head, thousands of dollars of repair, maybe totaled, I don't know. Uh, so I was expecting the worst when I got back over there. Uh, walked back over and shockingly, no damage. I mean, I, it was, <laughs> it was at greater than a 90 degree angle and when it stopped, the gooseneck part of the trailer was eight inches from the back of the cab. Yeah, things don't always go as planned while unloading 
the bulldozer. The weight of the dozer on the back lifted up the front and started making the whole thing roll, causing the uh, truck to jackknife. So, got the dozer up there. And looking back, I just knew that I had damaged my truck tremendously. It's a little bit of a pickle. I got one landing gear down on the trailer and now got to figure out a way to get my truck out of there. <laughs> well, here we go. That's probably what would have gotten damaged first, but man, I just feel very lucky. The truck itself was buried. The front of it was buried into the hillside and the front tires were down in the ditch, as you can see here. And uh, uh, so then I only had like a foot to play with. So I just did a little back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, turning the wheel each time until I got it straightened back out. And then uh, got on the, on the dozer and um, after everything was okay with the truck, got, came back over, got on the dozer and brought it part way up, about a thousand feet up this right of way uh, and parked it right where there's a water tower out of the way so that anybody wanted to use the right of way, which there's really only two people, me and my neighbor that has access to it. Um, so now we're back here the next day and I'm gonna get the dozer from its sitting place right now. I'm walking down the right of way. Um, where it's sitting right now and I'm going to bring it up to the top where the land's at and uh, as promised I'll give you a little walk around but I tell you what I thank the good Lord last night and again this morning for um, nothing bad happening because I could just see it in my mind's eye as I was rolling backwards sitting on that dozer on top of a trailer and out of control and not a good feeling so anyways, not to be a downer, just wanted to share with you what happened to get the, the uh, dozer to the property.